Good afternoon. I never know whether to say good afternoon or good evening when it's half past five, but I guess good evening is probably more accurate. Hi, Christina. Nice to see you online again. I know everybody's probably taking um, a long weekend with the public holiday being tomorrow and the shutdown today, etc. Everybody was a bit up in the air about what's going to happen. So I know it's a little bit higgledy piggledy this week, so that's fine. Um, the session will be recorded, so everybody will be able to listen to it, and this will be up on um, on YouTube to listen to. So as we know, these um, the collabs that we have are really just catch up sessions to make sure that. Um, oh, sorry, I just that everybody knows where they are and anybody who has got any questions has got the opportunity to ask their questions live. Um, some students are very um, hesitant to send me questions, which you really shouldn't be if you've got any question at all regarding the content. And it, it's never a silly question. It can be just one tiny little question, something that's niggling you or that's worrying you, please just send me a message via Learn um, and um, ask the question. That really is why your tutors are here. So never feel bad that you're going to be wasting that time asking um, a silly question. Okay, that, that literally is our main um, purpose. So... Um, I don't want to keep you guys too long this evening. I'll try and stick to it to about half an hour or 40 minutes or so, hopefully at the most this evening. Um, unless, of course, there's, there's questions and, and stuff that people want to ask. Um, so first off, I just want to give you guys an anchor of where we are in the semester. So we know that our... Um, academic weeks. We've got 12 academic weeks in a semester. And that means that the module outline and your learning units are divided up amongst those 12 weeks. We are currently today being Monday, um, today, Monday, the 20th of March, um, is the beginning of week four. I will give you regular updates as to what we're in and, and where you should be in the pace by that particular week as we go through the semester, just to kind of um, help you to um, have some kind of a structure. But remember always that it's a suggestion and just to help you as to where in the work you should be. And I don't ever want anybody to feel panic that if they haven't covered the work up to that particular part for that week that they start, um, that they then start panicking and then lose hope, or not hope, just lose heart and then um, then give up. Remember, there's always time. There's 12 academic weeks on the PACER, and we've really got 16 weeks before the exam, so we've got those extra three or four weeks at the end in hand where you can then catch up with where you are, do your exam revision, and get yourself ready for the exam. Okay, so during these 12 weeks, we or the first part of the 12 weeks, we focused on making sure that you guys are ready for your assignments and that you've got everything you need for the assignments and that you hand them in. Because remember, every single assessment that you complete is going to count towards your final marks. And if you don't hand in an assessment, even if you've only halfway finished it, you must send it in, hand it in, upload it, because you will still get those marks. Rather do that than have no marks at all because you didn't upload it. Okay. Um, so just regarding where we are. So today is the first day of week four. So if you have a look on the screen, um, our learning unit one, which is the bank reconciliation process, that one uh, we are suggested to go through, let me just pick up a color here. Um, 
Oh, I forgot that they're not putting this on the, they don't put this, they've taken this out of our 2023. Okay, so for LU1, the suggestion was um, week one and two, and then your LU2, the suggestion is that you should complete that in week three and week four. So LU1 is our bank recon. So hopefully you would have had time to go through that in the first two weeks of the semester. I know some people wait for textbooks, etc. So you just have to try and catch up when that happens. Um, and then in week three and four, which means last week and this week that we're in now, um, that you do this learning unit two debtors and creditors reconciliation. If you can keep up with that, then that will be first prize. Um, you are then giving yourself an equal amount of time for each of your learning units um, in, uh, in the syllabus for the semester to go through. Okay. The, the, your, all of your learning units for this um, accounting 1B are very, very practical which means last year when you did um, 5121, um, a lot of that was theoretical. It was practical in that you had to learn how to complete um, all the different subsidiary journals and you had to learn how to post them to the general ledger, etc. But that was kind of like your background bookkeeping. In this semester now, Accounting 1B, you are doing very practical um, bookkeeping slash accounting exercises. So these are actual accounting jobs that would have to be done by the bookkeeper or the junior accountants at the end of every month, let's say, for instance. Um, and in some cases at the end of the financial year. In most businesses, big businesses, they do these types of exercises, bank recons, debtors and creditors recons, um, depreciation for learning unit three, drawing up financial statements. So your first four learning units, those in most big businesses are done every single month. So these first four learning units are the real jobs that you would have to do if you were working in an accounting department. And you might then be the person responsible for having to do these particular tasks at the end of, um, of each accounting period when they were done. So it's very practical. So what I'm trying to convey by saying that is that because it's practical, these are things that you guys have to learn how to actually um, execute a bank reconciliation and execute a creditor's reconciliation. So that's how you must practice it. Yes, Christina, you are absolutely 100% correct. Um, accounting 1A, you is absolutely you have to know that really backwards to be able to do well and to cope with accounting 1b and then if you guys go on to do um, accounting 2 next year accounting 1a and 1b are critical to being successful in accounting 2. so that's also why it's really important to make sure that all of these learning units um, you practice and really understand the processes of each of these different um, chapters. Your last three, LU5, 6, and 7, um, 5 and 6 is just really taking financial statements from a partnership's point of view and from a closed corporation's point of view. But in learning unit 4, you then learn um, how to draw up full financial, full set of financial statements for a sole trader. So where you got to at the end of 5121 um, was year-end procedures in your learning unit nine. So at year-end procedures, you learned to do some closing off journal entries and you learned to produce a final trial balance and you learned to post your um, income and your profits to the capital account so that you could work out the profit for the year and then post the profit to the owner's capital account. That was as far as you got in 5121, in 1A. So we're going from that point. We are now moving forward, learning unit four, using that final trial balance. We are going to um, and those final adjustments that you learned about in learning unit nine. We're now going to take those and draw up 
um, the full financial statements, which means um, statement of comprehensive income and your statement of financial position and your statement of changes in equity. But before we do that in Learning Unit 4, we learn these three processes, which are also um, accounting month end procedures. Before you draw up your final statements, you have to check, does my bank reconcile? Is, is my bank account correct? And does it reconcile with what the banks, the actual bank itself, the bank institution says that I've got in my bank account? And in LU2, the debtors and creditors reconciliation, particularly the creditors reconciliation, we there have to make sure that what we say we owe the creditor agrees with what our supplier says that we owe them. And only when we've done those reconciliations can we then say, okay, my accounts are correct, I've corrected any errors, and I can now go on and um, calculate my depreciation for the end of the period, LU3. And once I've done that, I can then draw up my financial statements. So it's a very nice, um, I think, um, it's a really nice course, 1B. And in some ways, I think you'll probably find it easier than 1A, particularly if 1A was the first time you ever did um, accounting. But you, you have to go back to 1A, revise your debits and credits, revise the double entry system, revise your accounting equation. Those you're going to use all the way through to accounting three if you do accounting all the way to third year level. That None of that goes away and you need to be, stay on top of that. Okay, so bank recon in weeks one and two. And then um, debtors and creditors recon in week three and four. So by the end of this week, try and get to the end of learning unit two. And then also just to remind you guys again about the learning objectives, because this is important, not, I suppose, for the assignments as well, but um, with the assignments, you've got open book. But particularly when it comes to the exams, you pay attention to these learning objectives from each learning unit. So um, in learning unit one, we've got learning objective one, you must be able to explain what the purpose of a bank reconciliation is. So in other words, describe what is a bank recon? What am I actually doing in this procedure? What am I trying to um, achieve? Um, and then the second learning objective is then the actual practical skill. You must be able to actually physically prepare a bank recon from they will give you the data. They'll say, here's your bank statement information. Here's last month's bank reconciliation information. And here's your cash books for this month. Now prepare a bank reconciliation as at the end of this month. Just like in the questions in the textbook, um, the textbook is excellent. It's got questions in it that prepare you exactly for being able to do that. The example and the um, and questions. I've got huge faith in um, these edge accounting textbooks. And then when it comes to your second learning unit, there are two themes there. The first theme is the control account system. So in that theme, they explain to us why do we have control accounts? So what is a control account? Um, in terms of LU1 and LU2, for LU1, our, our bank account in our general ledger is a control account that we are going to reconcile to the bank statement. And the bank account is also a control account because our cash book receipts and our cash book payments get posted to that one bank account to determine what my bank balance is at the end of a month after I've taken all my receipts and payments into account. We then calculate how much is in our bank account in our general ledger. Then we go and take our physical bank statement from our bank and we compare that closing balance to our general ledger's closing balance. And we have a look to see if there is a difference. And there usually is, for some very good reasons, what, what are those differences? And that is the bank recon that I draw up must perfectly explain how do I get from the bank statements balance, what are the individual items that I need to add or subtract from that bank statement amount to exactly equal my 
bank account amount. So that's why we call it a control account system, because we are using that bank account as a control account. Because if I can put a big tick next to that bank account in my general ledger, say I've reconciled this bank account, everything from my system has been posted to it correctly and it agrees to the bank statement, then I know I'm good to go. Um, so that's what this first theme does is explain this control account system. Then you also know um, by now from um, also last um, in accounting 1A, your learning unit 7, where you were introduced to your debtor's ledger and your creditor's ledger, where you had to learn to draw up um, your accounts receivable and your accounts payable as a separate sub-ledger that was listed individually by each debtor and by each creditor. So I drew up a list of all my debtors with their individual accounts, how much they had bought from me and how much they had paid and what their closing balance on, on their statement was at the end of the month. All of those individual debtors accounts added together had to exactly equal my debtors control account balance in my general ledger. That's why that actually has that word control in the name of the account. And then exactly the same for the creditors. Um, I uh, my creditors ledger is a record of each individual creditor supplier that I purchase from listing everything, all the invoices that I've bought from them and every all the amounts that I've paid them, what the closing balance is for the month. I add up all of those creditors' closing totals and that total must exactly equal my creditors' control account or trade creditors' account in my general ledger. And then I know that both my general ledger and my debtors' ledger and my creditors' ledger all the transactions in in those um, um, what we call them accounting systems are correct, and my control account um, I've got I've got confidence that the balance in that control account is correct. So this is why this learning unit two that we do now in one B, you must go and revise learning unit seven from one um, A. Uh, let's say, before LU2 from 1B. And the reason that I'm saying you should go and revise it is because, remember, it's also very important to remember that your debtor's ledger, the, the, your closing balance for your debtor will increase with debits so every debit will increase the balance and any credits to your to your debtors control account will decrease the balance and the opposite is true for your creditors control because creditors is the amount we owe our supplier so that's a liability so our creditors has got a carrying credit balance so any credit that gets posted to my creditors ledger will increase the balance and any debits will decrease the balance so remember um, it's really easy to remember you just remember debtors um, that my, my debtors control or my debtors ledger increases with all debits so debtors and debits and my creditors creditors ledger or my creditors control account will increase with all credits that are posted to it the debtors increases with debits creditors increases with credits that's the tricky part that students often get wrong is that um, you must always remember that with debtors your carrying balance is a debit balance in your books and with your creditor system your carrying balance is a credit balance in your books um, and then with LU2, so the first theme is the control account system. So that's a little bit um, theoretical. And then your learning objectives specifically 
Um, the first one, you must be able to record financial transactions in a debtor's ledger and a creditor's ledger. And then you must be able to prepare a debtor's control account and a creditor's control account. This one is very important. They often ask these um, ask you to prepare a debtor's control account or a creditor's control account in a question, which means they'll give you a list of transactions um, and they will then say, prepare the control account and you, you need to remember what goes on the left hand side of a debtor's control, what goes on the right hand side of a debtor's control account. And remember here we're talking of when we say the control account, these are T accounts. So T with debits on the left and credits on the right. Your debtor's control account will always have the same entries on the left hand side and it will always have the same entries on the right hand side. So on the left hand side of your debtor's control account, you will always have um, the total amount posted from your um, debtor's journal, which increases the debtor's carrying amount. So debit on the left hand side and from your cash book um, receipts. That will get posted to the right hand side of your debtor's control account, all the amounts that your debtors paid you during the month that will reduce the control account for your debtors. And then I'm not going to talk now about the, the other bits and pieces like interest and discounts, et cetera. But those are your main ones. And the same thing with the creditors. Your creditors control count is then the opposite way around. All invoices, so your total from your creditors journal that you post to the creditors control account at the end of the month, that total will go on the right hand side of your creditors T account because it is a credit and whatever you purchase from your suppliers is increasing the amount that you owe them. So it must go on the right hand side and from your cash book payments, that total will go on the left hand side of the creditors control account because that will reduce the amount that you owe your creditors. So that will be a debit. Credit your bank account, debit the creditors control account. So just practice that and memorize exactly what goes where on your two control accounts. That is important. And then the theme two is then the actual um, reconciliation process. So I did post um, a, a short video to your YouTube playlist sometime this morning, I think it was, um, that explains this procedure. And it's really you can say pretty much the identical process as a bank recon process where you've got your bank account and the bank statement and you reconcile in the two with your creditors recon. You've got your creditors control account and you have got your um, creditors statement that they've posted to you and you con and you reconcile in those two. So the steps that you follow to do that reconciliation process is pretty much the same. You're looking to see what mistakes did the business make in terms of posting things incorrectly, perhaps an, an incorrect amount or they've left something out. And what mistakes did the creditor make? Maybe they posted something twice. Maybe they haven't posted um, a receipt yet of some money that you sent them. And so you identify these differences write them up into your recon the same way you do in the bank recon and arrive at a balance that agrees the two systems together. That's your prepared debtors and creditors reconciliation. So necessary adjustments and corrections. This is what you will do. LO3, this is what you will do as you identify differences and you identify, do I have to correct something? in which case you go and you correct it in your ledgers or does my creditor, my supplier have to correct something on their side, in which case you write it on the creditor's recon. Remember, it's the same for a bank. If you've made a mistake in your books, you will correct it in your ledgers or subsidiary journals. And if the bank has made a mistake, then you write that up on the bank recon. So that you can send that recon to the bank to tell them, OK, guys, this is what you've got to fix up. Same thing with the creditors. You'll send that 
creditor's reconciliation to your supplier the next time you pay them so that they can see, okay, this is why you are paying them the amount that, that you've paid them. Okay, obviously necessary because our time is so short, I can't go into full long explanations of all of this, but when you are going through this, any questions that you've got at all, guys, and you must please um, let me know. But as I say, I've got the full confidence in your textbooks. They are really good. Um, you must work through the example and follow each example step by step. Make sure you've understood exactly what they've done and then attempt a question um, so that you can then practice on your own. And then when you do the question, you'll quickly find out what you've understood and what you need to practice some more. So also just to remind you, these LU1 and LU2 um, are for assignment one, just those first two learning units. So as soon as you're happy that you've mastered these two learning units, you can go ahead and work on your assignment. So also the next time I see you will be on Wednesday, the April the 5th. So Wednesday, the 5th of April, um, we will have our national support session. Um, for assignment one. So that means on that date, we will go, we will dedicate that collab just to the assignment itself. I'll go through all the questions, explain exactly what you must do in them, make sure you understand what they're asking of you. I'll, be, I'll explain where to find everything that you need to be able to do all of the questions. So that's LU1 and 2, and then you're good to go. Um, and your first assignment is due on the 18th of April. So you have got a good amount of time to get these two learning units under your belt, practice them, tackle the assignment and get the assignment in for the 18th of April. But remember, just don't get sidetracked too much with the assignment and then forget about going on with the rest of your um going on with the rest of your work because in terms of your pacer after this week which is week four in week five and week six um, you should complete your LU3 which is depreciation and that's quite a big chapter so don't get too far behind so that you miss out on that Okay, so that was what I just wanted to go over. You've got that video, so I'm not going to, I kind of thought I might go through it if I had time this evening. Um, but it is, it does take quite a long time to go through. So you, you do have the narrated slides for that. So go through that. And then if you're stuck with anything, um, then let me know. The other thing that I wanted to just quickly show you this evening as well to make sure first of all let me just check um christina have you got any other questions regarding the actual content of lu1 and lu2 yet anything that you wanted to ask as you've gone through the work anything that you need help with remember guys if you've got any questions when you're going through just let me have them and then i'll address it in the next collab I'll obviously answer you straight away, but if I see there's a question that I'm getting from um, several students, then I'll address it in the collab or I'll send a, um, an announcement explaining it so that you guys can get ahead and go. All right, okay, that's great. So what I just wanted to do, I just want to close off to close off that for a moment. Um, oh, the wrong thing I've clicked on. And just go to sharing my screen. Um, and then I just also want to make sure that you guys know your way around learn. Um, oops, wrong way around. Here we go. Courses, and I want five one two two. 
Okay, let me just check back. Okay, so hopefully you can see my screen now. Um, so what I've done now, if you're following on the screen, is I have gone into the module. So ACBP 5122. I'm going down here on your menu to learning units. So this is what you must do when you're working through your different learning units. Please sit with your computer and your textbook and your workbook and, and blank paper, scribble paper, and go through, um, use this learn system to go through. So you, if you click on your learning unit one, bank reconciliation, you'll see that this is structured where right at the top of every learning unit, the very first screen, they give you your objectives. So that means over here, they explain your outcomes, which is what they will test you on. So here again, you can see it was the same in our module outline, explain the purpose of a bank recon and prepare a bank reconciliation statement. And then they will have it also split into the theme. So here we've got theme one, the business and the bank. So this is really just a bit of background and some theory, um, a little bit of theory about why businesses need banks, etc and what are a little bit about our bank account. And then the theme two is the actual bank reconciliation process. So um, you've always got this item on the side of your main, at the beginning of the theme. So if you click on that, it will take you to a link. And this one, for instance, explains reconciling bank accounts for your business. This is a very nice little links and all the way through learn, they've got these links to articles, videos, definitions. Um, in this case, this is an article from a website and they usually try and pick them quite nicely so that they're interesting and it gives you a little bit more information than just your textbook. And sometimes it's in more of a chatty way than your textbook, so it's easier for you to understand. I particularly liked um, this article here. Um, so you can go through this and it tells you if you've done everything right, then your accounting records should match the bank's records when it comes to how much cash you have in your accounts. So they're explaining in everyday language exactly what this process of a bank recon is all about. And then they give you a little example of a bank recon where you can see the beginning balance of the bank statement and then what's the ending balance and you check in that to make sure that that agrees with the balance. Here they say per your, per, um, your checkbook, if you were an, uh, an individual, but we were a business, so we want to know, I must agree with the balance per our, um, our bank account. Um, oops, sorry, not that one, I want this one. And then if you go over here and then you click on the theme itself, so you, where it says theme two, if you click on that, it will take you into that theme where you've then got more information, more videos and links, and it's where you will find the activities. So I wanted to just show you this as well because I have posted your ICE tasks. Um, what's today's Monday? So I posted your list of ICE tasks last week. So I will show you here exactly how to find um, your ask tasks in learn because if you had have read that announcement that I made for ask tasks I've said there that all ask tasks are learn activities so we are in LU1 learning unit one theme two so the activity number would be 1.2 one. So here you see I've inserted the word asked in front of the activity's name so that you can pick it up easily. So on your ask task list, I have written there activity 1.2.1. So that means the one is LU1, the two is theme two, and then the one at the end is activity one within theme two. So as long as you've got your activity number, you'll be able to find your ICE activities without any problem. So an ICE activity with 2.2.3, that would be LU2 theme 2 activity 3. So you'll see in this first uh, learning unit, you've got two ICE tasks 
1.2.1 and 1.2.2. I hope that's right. I'll go back and check just to make sure that that um, I haven't marked them both incorrect. But and then remember also with the ice tasks, you've got a list of six and you must do four of them. And it's your choice which four you do. You'll complete all of them here on learn. So if you wanted to do, uh, if you chose this one, which is a test, click on the link above the red arrow. So you guys hopefully remember this from, um, from last year. You click on that and it will then open the test, give you instructions and you click on begin and away you go. And when you finish, please don't forget to click on submit so that it closes the test and it posts your, um, your answers and um, tests are automatically marked. Any other activities, for instance, like this 1.2.2 is a discussion. Um, I will go and check that and um, and give you a and, and make sure you've you've got a mark. But remember, with ice tasks as well, as long as you have completed the ice task. So for instance, um, a test, you'll get a mark for it automatically. If you have completed this task here, that is a discussion, you'll automatically get the, um, you will automatically get the 25% of your ask masks you'll get because you completed it. So things like wikis and discussions and blogs, those are for completion. So as long as you've completed it, you know you've got your 25% um for your ice marks for that task and then what i also wanted to show you within this particular theme to bank recon you've got a bit of a discussion and wherever you have got something that's highlighted in blue if you click on that that will take you to another link where you'll get a definition and explanation and article and please guys watch these videos so if you click on the actual video you'll go straight the video and watch it if you click on the blue link it will take you to youtube and you can watch the video within youtube so this is why i say work with your textbook in conjunction with learn um, because as you're going through this so in other words you would have read all of this you would have read clicked through and read those links watch these two videos and then learn tells you find the rest of the answers and learn more about the bank recon procedure in learning unit one um, and the steps that may be followed in the textbook. Um, that's another activity at the bottom. Um, and that will, okay. So the whole system is designed that you use these posts that have been created in Learn within each of these themes In conjunction with your textbook, they're designed to assist you in understanding and working through everything. So, for instance, this one here for LU2, it gives you some questions, it gives you some things to go and read, and then it says find the rest of your answers in Learning Unit 2, the control account system, the textbook, and then go and study example 2.1. Focus on the entries that are recorded in the debtors and creditors control accounts of the general ledger. And then, in addition, take note of how the general journal is used to make the necessary adjustments. So remember, we are going to trace um, any differences between our system and the creditor system. And if we need to make any adjustments, those will be made in the general journal. So example 2.1 will lead you through all of the steps in doing the reconciliation process as well as then what do I do once I've found these differences and what is it that I send through to my creditor to tell them that I have found some differences. And then the set off is another topic. Um, and here is another activity. So guys, also, even if these activities are not us activities, you if you have got time, please do them because they're all designed to give you practice in these in these specific um, topics of of the theme itself.
And then in this one, so this was theme one, the control account system. Theme two, debtors and creditors reconciliation. Um, and also take note, they've got a little item here called connect the dots. So they say, again, referring back to accounting 1A in learning unit six, when you learned about inventory, we did perpetual and periodic inventory system. And they're reminding you about that as well, because all of that will link into what you are doing um, in 1B. So you go through to theme two, debtors and creditors recons. Um, and in this case here, they've got an activity for you to practice with. Um, part one and part two, and a, and a second activity also to practice with, where you actually practice a creditor's recon. Um, and here in the third activity, preparing a creditor's reconciliation. Here they explain what a remittance advice is. This one here is an ICE activity, 2.2.5. So hopefully you will come and do that. So with, within this particular theme, there are five activities that you can do to make sure you understand um, debtors and creditors reconciliation process. Okay, so that was one of the things I just wanted to do this evening was just to make sure you, you really understand the value of working through these learning units on learn together with your textbook. And your, and your examples in the textbook, and then your workbook with the questions. Okay, guys, um, if there aren't any more questions, then I'm going to stop the recording for now, and I'll look forward to hearing from you soon with any questions that you've got any places that you stuck and um, i'll be able to assist you and then just keep a lookout in your announcements i'll keep in touch with you there and then um, i will also from time to time be posting um, new material up in your um in your, on your youtube playlist for accounting 1b okay guys thank you very much have a lovely public holiday tomorrow and then I will chat to you the week after next in our um, collab or our national support session for your first assignment. Thanks, guys. Chat again soon.